to North Shore Crafts YouTube channel. Fall is in the air and I don't know about you, but I have the inkling to make a fall wreath to put on my door. And I'm not really into the pumpkins and the bows and all of that, so I am going to make a beautiful art wreath. And I am going to use, I think you'll remember this from Christmas, I'm going to use my seasonal, I think these colors are neutral enough that they work for everything. So I'm going to start with this as my base, my original punch needle piece. And I'll have a tutorial on how to do that if you need a room fresher. And then I'm going to use these fall foliage dried leaves that I got from the local floral shop. Okay, first up we're gonna go over frame options. Because I picked up, I wanted a big hoop because it's my front door and I wanted it to be seen from the street. So I picked a really big large hoop. And in order to get my punch needle pattern, I needed a large frame. So we're gonna go over some of the large frame options that you can use if you have the same situation. Now because this one, I only wanted it part of it, I didn't want my entire hoop covered with the punch needle. I, you don't need very wide of a frame. You just almost need a really long frame. So I went about and I have a gripper strip frame. So that's our first one. And I'm also going to show you, I've had a few people ask how you put the cloth on the gripper strip frame. So here's the gripper strip frame and you cut your fabric. This I believe is 20 by 20. And I will have a link down below in the comments on sh to how you make this uh, video showing you how to make the gripper strip frame if you need one, if you're interested in that. So for the gripper strip frame, you, m you lie your fabric over the grippers and then the grippers up going like this will grab. So you basically, and they don't grab this way. So you just, stretch it and lay it down and it will grab the fabric. And you do that all the way on both sides. Super easy and it's already tight. Um, and then another option you can use would be these um, the stretcher bars that I have in my shop. You will want the 22 inch bar because it will be long enough for your frame. And then you can just use the 15 inch for the top. And you can make a stretcher bar frame that's kind of like a canvas frame and you can stretch your, with tacks. You can stretch your fabric out on that. And then the tacks allow you to easily remove the canvas after you're done. And then the last one, this one isn't big enough for our project today as it does not fit. But if you are not doing a really big hoop, you could use the Morgan Nove slip hoop, but it's easy to set up. And this is a 17 inch, so you could get a 17 inch hoop. Or you could even not, so because you're working with a circle, you could make it so the largest part ends here. So you could make it where your, your frame would just be this part of it. So instead of going this far up on your hoop, you could go down to here. So it would be even less of the hoop that you're using. And those are the frame options. I will, I'm not going to go over the punch needle stitches today because I've already gone over those all in detail. And I will have links to all of the stitches that are included in this particular one. You got your back stitch here. And then this is a weave stitch. And these are just fabric that I twisted instead of using the macrame cotton. I just twisted this fabric in here and then, and then stitched it in. This is a wide stitch. This is the poofy stitch. And this is a long stitch and this one curled around the side which was it's I love it I loved how it turned out I did not mean for it to turn out that way but I'm really glad it did because it turned out even better than I thought it was going to be so those are the stitches and the tutorials will be down the links will be down below if you want to check those out once you have your beautiful punch needle art all completed you will then glue the punch needle piece onto your metal hoop 
glue works the best because of the way that you have to glue it on. And to glue it on, you basically will glue your hem down here, and then you will glue this. I glued the first this part on first and let it dry. So you can do this and this first and let it dry. And then you're gonna have to pull this. So you want this to be dry before you do all of it. So you can pull it tight so there's not a lot of looseness here. If you want the full tutorial of how I glued everything, there is a link in the comments below for you to check that one out. And then we're gonna put your greenery on. That's it, we've done all of it so far. It's a pretty easy, and then once you have this, I think that this, if you pick neutral colors such as this, then you could dress this, this can be Christmas colors. These could, would be really good Easter colors. These are good fall colors, and so I didn't really have to get that fall looking of greenery because I already picked fall colors. So you can use it for multiple holidays, one punch needle piece, one cute hoop, and then you just get to play every season with different greenery or eggs or whatever you find for if each season to dress it up. All right, to start, I kind of, I took this to the floral shop with me so I could kind of see what would, colors would match. And a lot of, they had a lot of bright oranges and yellows and they just didn't match well with my color scheme here. So I ended up with a lot of just kind of greenery with a little a bit of the pinks and then of course the pompous. And then a little bit of wheat. And then this was from my Christmas bouquet. So to start, I usually just kind of lay things out to see how I'm going to get it to look. And when I laid it out in the store, I thought this would look really cool if I had it kind of taking over the background and filling in and kind of laying out like this. And then, These lend better to kind of curving, and you're gonna need you're gonna need the floral wire, and you're gonna attach it here. So you kind of have to think about. So I'll attach this here, and then I thought I could hold it into place with some of my other greenery. So you kind of do have to think about that. It does have to go along this route. So you just kind of lay it out until it looks pretty. I know that's not very helpful, but it really is. I know nothing about this, and all I did was kind of just play with it until I liked what it looked like. And then once you kind of get an eye for what you want it to look like, that's when you're gonna start piecing it together. And this is kind of play. I will show you one here real quick. Cut your wire. You can just use regular scissors for floral wire. I just happen to have those handy. And I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna put this bee stone first. And you're just gonna use your floral wire to tie it around. You just need to tie it in place. That's all you're doing. So I will twist it one hard one to kind of get it into, to get really secure and then you can kind of play with it. And then it, just that one first one to secure it works really well from what I have done. And then you're going to want to kind of hide it. That's I think going to be my hardest part with this design is how am I going to hide my piece. Also kind of pick it up every once in a while to see if it's going to stay. So this one is not going to stay, but I'm not going to think I can use this since these are so rough. I don't really want to attach it. So I'm just going to kind of play with it to see if it's going to stand up on its own. 